Hello, this is Susan Olds from Cochise College Nursing and welcome to this presentation over Chapter 23, just the key points on heparin calculations. After reviewing the chapter modules in this brief podcast, you should be able to state the importance of calculating heparin dosages accurately, identifying errors that have occurred with heparin administration, and be able to calculate subcutaneous dosages of heparin. Heparin is classified as a high alert medication because it has caused serious injuries and death because of misuse or mix-ups with concentrations. We're not going to be concentrating on giving IV heparin this term, but it's important to realize that um, heparin is administered IV and it must be given on a pump. And we'll explain more about that or work more with that when we go into IV therapy. Math errors determining the volume of heparin um, to administer are easy to make a mistake because if you started working your calculations realize that there's a lot of zeros involved. Also you can have a tenfold overdose related to using a U instead of unit because someone might interpret the calculation as a zero instead of a U. Heparin has been found to be in one of the top 10 drug errors so in 2008, the National Patient Safety Goal was to reduce the likelihood of patient's harm associated with anticoagulation medication. So they did some changes to the labeling. They made the labels bolder and larger typefaced, as well as the font size increased. The total unit strength and the volume on the label was more easily to be able to be read and they simplified the um, text. Not for lock flush was on the cap of the vials of heparin, which helped to improve um, or prevent more errors. A brief review, heparin is used to um, prevent clots, clotting. It's a potent anticoagulant. The dosages are expressed in units in the uh, drug level, uh, we talked about this in class, that there are some medications where uh, laboratory work can be done to check for therapeutic ranges, and this is one of those medications. Um, the dosage can be based on weight. It's given IV as um, in units per hour on an IV pump, but we won't be concentrating on that now. And I want to reiterate that because I want you to concentrate your studies on just the subcutaneous administration of heparin. It's available as a single dose or a multi-dose vial and the single dose are in pre-packaged syringes. The important thing to realize why it is so easy to make a mistake with heparin is that heparin is um, dosed or the strength of heparin can be 10 units per one milliliter up to 50,000 units per ml. Wow, you could make a horrendous error. We talked about this in relationship to pediatric medications and we're still talking about it. Two nurses must always check the doses of a heparin before it is administered. There is a low molecular weight heparin called Lovenox and it's used to treat uh, or to prevent deep vein thrombosis, which we call DVTs, and usually that's from hip or knee replacement or someone who has unstable chest pain, angina, or acute coronary syndromes. From your readings or the module, you may have heard this. The average heparin flush is 10 units per ml, and it never exceeds 100 units per ml, but what the heck is a heparin flush? Today, we do not use heparin flushes as often. We used to use it all the time to prevent a clot in an IV tube, but now we've learned that saline, just using saline as a flush will work adequately. So you will not see heparin flushes as often, not to say that they're not still available for using with central lines and things like that, which are uh, another 
important topic to be discussed later. Heparin sodium for injection and heparin lock flush solutions can never be interchangeable. So knowing that there are two types of heparin is very important. We talked about reading labels already. And again, this is why reading a label is so important. You can never give heparin IM or intramuscularly because it can lead to bruising or hematomas and, of course, uh, patient harm. So uh, remember that um, there's a heparin uh, flush and there's a, a regular heparin solution for injection. So read the label carefully. Here's an example of two heparin uh, vials. Unfortunately, they don't show you the top. I wish they did so you could see the rubber stopper. But here again is the importance of reading the label. You'll notice that the um, vial on the left as you're looking at the screen is 1,000 units, USPs, per ml. And it also says not for lock flush. Then you'll notice that the second vial on uh, your right hand side says 5,000 USP units per ml. Very important to read the label. And finally, let's take a look at this calculation of a subcutaneous dosage. Remember in class, I passed around the tuberculin syringes, so you have a better idea, I hope, of the one milliliter syringe. Heparin is exact dosing. There's no rounding. It may be prepackaged, as I mentioned in an earlier slide. You never round. You can give to the hundredth. Remember, you practiced. You gave 0 0.67. And you can do it accurately with that type of syringe, but no other syringe. So read the labels carefully before administering and to ensure the safety of the patient. Uh, verify the dosage, the vial, and the amount. And remember the steps that I talked about in class where when you go to verify that medication dosage with someone else, you can leave it in the vial, stuck in the vial, so someone can actually see the vial that you're drawing the medication out of. And you don't tell them what the dose is supposed to be so that they can tell you what they see. And that way you have a better opportunity for not making a mistake. Remember that heparin is a high alert medication and you can hurt somebody or kill somebody if you give them the incorrect dose. Here's an example using the formula method on calculating a dose of heparin. And you know what? If you've uh, mastered the formula method, or whichever method you prefer. You can see that you set the problem up just like you've set your other problems up. You have your desired 7,500 units over what you have, 10,000 units, times the quantity. And in this case, the dose is supposed to be 7,500 units, and that equates to 0 0.75 mLs given with a tuberculin syringe. Thank you for joining me on this podcast, and I'll see you in class. Just a little joke of the day. Where the patient is complaining about being attached to a thousand machines, someone's always sticking me with something, taking my blood or my pee or my blood pressure. You know it's a bad day when the best part of your day is the heparin shot. If you notice that the patient is getting it into their abdomen, this is one of the normal sites for giving subcutaneous medications. Again, thank you for joining me. This is Susan Knowles from Cochise College Nursing.